Hi everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to look at Django REST framework permissions and how we can use them to authorize our users. So we've looked at authentication which is a way in which we can be able to verify if, it's, if a user is who they claim to be. Now REST framework permissions allow us to authorize users and by authorization I mean that we be able to access what we are supposed to access or be able to do what we are supposed to do according to the rights of access that we have. So REST framework comes with some of those permissions and we actually use some of those permissions. For example, if I go to our Visual Studio code and if you go to our order views right here in our order creation view, we can be able to actually see that we were able to protect these views with a this authenticated permission. So this means that we can only make a request to these endpoints when we are authenticated or when you have a JWT. So what we're going to do is to basically look at how we can grant access to these various endpoints as well as how we can be able to restrict access to these endpoints. So when you go to our mini documentation right here, we actually have most of the endpoints. So right here we have uh, the authentication endpoints which actually are accessed by all users of our application. So now when you go to that creating of orders and placing of orders, getting a list of all orders, we have this accessed by all users. But we can kind of uh, modify this to work in a way that's better. For example, we can be able to restrict order, restrict users from creating an order if they are not logged in and be able to grant them access to actually make a list of all orders made. So what I'll do is to go to our views and we need to import that is authenticated or read only permission. So I'll say it's authenticated or read only, then I'll come and add that to our REST framework permission. So right here in our permission classes, in our order create list view, I'll change this to is authenticated or read only. So right after doing this, then what I'm going to do is to actually go ahead and make a request to this. So when I go to my summary right here, and go to listing all orders, I can actually go ahead and list all orders without having to be authenticated. So when I go to placing an order, and let's say we do not have any authorization header in here. So if I try to create an order, right now we see that we need authentication credentials to actually access this particular route. So what I'll do is to go ahead and create a JWT. So I'll come right here and log in with these credentials of our admin. So when I send this, we create an access and a refresh token. So what I'm interested in is our access token. So when I go to uh, placing an order, what I need to do is to actually provide the authorization header. So I'll provide the authorization header and then the key is going to be bearer and then the JWT. So when I send this, right here we see that we are actually able to create uh, an order. So let's go ahead and try to also protect other routes. So when I go to our mini documentation right here, we have other routes that are specific to only super users. So for example, the routes that are for retrieving an order as well as uh, updating our orders. So I'll go to our views right here and import another permission. So we need to import that is admin user permission. So this is going to be is admin user. So what that did is admin user permission is going to help us to do is to basically protect those routes that are to only be accessed by a super user. So if we go right here, what you can do is to actually protect this. So this is actually the endpoint that visa is supposed to protect for the super user. So if I come right here and let's say I added dot uh, that is admin. So I'm going to add that dot that is admin permission. And right here, if hoping that everything is fine and our server is starting, so we don't have any issues. So when I come right here, what I can do is to actually get a specific order. So when I try, so let me actually remove this authorization header. And so what I'm going to do is to confirm and delete it. So when I send this, we see that we need to provide authentication credentials. So let's say if you provided them, so let's say authorization. And then let's say we provided a token, let's say like bearer, and then the token. In this case, if we send this, we now be able to actually get the order with a specific ID because this is a super user now. Let's say we had a, 
a user who is not a supervisor and wanted to enable them to basically get an order or oh, actually we, we just trying to get an order by its ID on a restricted route so we can go and create this user so I can come right in here and what I'll do is actually create this user so I'm going to create a user so let's say I'm going to create a user called Joel and then this is going to be uh, Joel at app.com so I'll provide a phone number so let me actually change this random digit so let's say I change this to 6 and change this because these are just the phone numbers so if I send, right here we see an error, and this error is like we have a password returned to us, something that we may not want, and then it's also not hashed. So to fix this, what I'm going to do is to go and I basically change our serializer to enable us to hash our password. So I head over to our Visual Studio code, and then I'll enter our authentication application. So within our authentication application, I'll go to our serializers, and right how what we did is actually specify how to validate our data so one thing we forgot is to actually implement that method that's going to help us to basically use our serializer to actually create a user object so i'm going to override that method so it's going to be def create and then this is going to take himself as well as the validated data so in this case the validated data is going to be the data that has been validated that has been checked for all these validations. So we need to check the validated data. And then now the next thing we're going to do is to do to create a user object using our validated data. So I'll say user. And in this case, what we're going to have is a user created out of these specific validated data. So I'll say user dot object. So then we shall go ahead and say dot create and then what we shall have here is the first thing we're going to have is our username so i'll specify our username and our username is going to be our validated data so we shall access the validated data and then we shall access the username since this is a dictionary so we shall access the username we shall do the same thing for our email so we shall say that our email is going to be our validated data and then we shall access the email now for our phone number we're going to do the same thing so i'll say phone number actually this is a mistake so this is going to be phone number and this is going to be our validated data it's going to be our validated data and then we shall access our phone number so right here what we're doing is actually create that user object and save it to our database now, what, what, the, the thing we forgot here to actually do is to set a password for this user object we've created. So to do that, I'm going to call user.setPassword. So we're going to call a set password method on our user. And then we pass in the password that we want to actually save for this particular user. So I'll say this is going to be our validated data. And then we shall get access to the password. So once we have this, then what we can do is to go ahead and basically uh, save this user. So I'll say user.save. And after saving this user, what we shall return is our user object. So I'm going to return our user. So when I save this, this is pro most probably going to solve our problem of password hashing. So when I go back to our insomnia, actually what I'll do is to first delete that user. So I need to come here. And right now you see the password is uh, it's not hashed, so I'm going to delete this. And when I delete this user, and another thing we've actually also forgotten is to make our password fields write only. So by write only, I mean that our passwords do not be do, do, are not required for us to read them. So for example, if we create our password, it's saved in our database, but we cannot be able to read it. So I'll come and specify within our serializer that we're going to have write only so this is going to be right only equal to true meaning that you can create our password but you can't be able to read it from our database so when i save i'm going to go ahead and i'll create this user so we've deleted the user so when i go back to my insomnia right here and i send the same information right here i see the username the email the phone number created but the password is hidden so when i go back to our admin section we need to go to our admin and when I refresh, right here we see our user created and the password is now hashed. 
So let's go ahead and try to make a request with this user we've created. So I'll head over to Insomnia and what I'll do is to do the same thing. So let's say get an order by its ID. So I'll actually generate a JWT. So I'll come and say, let's say joel at app.com. And when I send this, it's going to return an access and a refresh token. So when I copy this access token, I'm going to go ahead and use it to get an order by its ID. So for example, if I go to our headers, let me actually delete this first. Right now we don't have authentication credentials, but let's say I wanted to actually access that. So what I'll do is to say, here I'm going to say authorization and then provide the value. So in this case, it's going to be fairer and then the access token. So if I make this request, right now we see that the permissions have failed to, we, we have failed to, we have checked for the permissions and we don't have the permission of this admin user. So that is admin user permission allows us to only carry out requests when we are admin users. So this is kind of restricted to all users who are not updated admin. So let's say if we wanted to update an order and we did the same thing. So let's actually provide the same token right here. And if we send this right now, we see that we do not have permissions to perform this action. So if I say, let's say I, I did the same for an admin user who is our admin. So let's say our admin. And when I send this, we create an access token. So let's say I wanted to update an order and this is protected. So when I come and provide the token, right now we see uh, not found. So let's try this for actually, let's say two. Right now we see that we can be able to update an order because this is the admin user. So let's go ahead and also look at other endpoints. When I go to our preview, readme.md, we now have been able to protect those ones for updating and deleting. So what we need is to actually check for the one for updating the order status. So to do that, I need to come within our, within our views of pi, so I'll come within our views. And then for updating an order status, this is going to be carried out by an admin user. So I'm going to go and look for that specific view. So it's going to be the update order status view. And right here, I'll add a list of permission classes. So this is going to be a list of permission classes. And this is going to be a list. So for me to specify that this is going to be is admin user. So we shall access this with his admin user. And when I save this, right now what we have is to get to basically carry out a request where we are admin users. So let's say we wanted to update an order status. If I carry out this request, um, right now it's delivered because we have an admin user. So let's say if we deleted this, and let's say we went and created a JWT for a user who is not an admin. So I'll go to the body, and then let's say we wanted to log in with Joel. So when I send this, I'm going to get this access token and then go ahead to the update order status and update. So I'll say it's going to be authorization and then we shall have a bearer and then the token. So when I send this, right now we see that we do not have permission to perform this action. So right now we see how uh, these permissions work and how they can help us to grant access as well as to restrict access to the various endpoints of our application. Thank you for watching this video and if you liked it, please leave a like, a share, tell me what you feel in the comments and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you for watching guys and see you in the next video.